Robusta is horrible. You can basically only make instant coffee with it. It tastes like burnt rubber. That's the most common prejudice about Robusta. But actually, it's more complicated than that. Today, we're gonna take a look at the true story of Robusta. In the research phase leading up to this video, I reached out to my followers on Instagram and asked them about their impression of Robusta. And I got some really funny answers. Somebody said, I almost stopped drinking coffee after a few bad experiences with Robusta. Worst specialty coffee I've ever tried. Roasted sunflower seeds mixed with sausage slash mud. Bad, very bitter. But the interesting thing was that I actually also got some pretty good feedback especially from the people who actually work with coffee. One Q creator said, high altitude ones are good. Another one said, delicious and complex. So it kind of shows that Robusta might not be as bad as its reputation. In my last video about espresso beans, I talk about how concentration can affect the flavors of coffee. And I feel like that's really the case with Robusta. So if you haven't seen that video yet, you should definitely check it out because I explain a few key concepts when it comes to concentration. Today, we're gonna to take a close look at the history of Robusta. We're gonna look into why it's misunderstood and how it can be better. We're also gonna couple the Robusta and talk about the taste notes. And in the end, I'm also gonna brew an espresso shot based on 100% Robusta. So stay tuned. Many people have the idea that Robusta just tastes awful, but instead of being too prejudiced, I think it's better to just cup the coffee and then after we can talk about the flavor notes and see if it's really that bad. For Robusta, the Specialty Coffee Association actually recommends cupping at 1 to 17, but I find with Robusta you need to up the dose to really taste the flavor. So I'm gonna go up to 1 to 14 for this one. While the coffee is steeping, let me give you a bit of backstory. It's difficult to talk about Robusta without also getting into its more famous cousin, Arabica. Arabica had already been popular for more than 250 years when Robusta came into the picture. Arabica originated in the highlands of Ethiopia and it only thrives in conditions similar to its original habitat which makes it quite difficult to grow. So when coffee started to become a global commodity there was a lot of commercial interest in finding a species that could be grown at lower altitudes. Around 1870 a coffee from the West African nation Liberia started to be promoted as the ideal lowland coffee. This plant came to be known as Liberica. Initially, Liberica was believed to be resistant to leaf rust. However, by 1895, this advantage had disappeared. Many Liberica plantations in Southeast Asia were wiped out by the disease and the crop never regained its popularity. Around this time, European botanists went into the more remote parts of Central Africa where they found a new promising species that they named not Robusta, but Corfea canephora. The species had a high yield while also being able to grow in lowlands. It also proved to be very resistant to diseases. This is partly due to its higher caffeine content, around 2.7% compared to Arabica's meager 1.5. When humans ingest caffeine, it works as a stimulant, but for insects, it's like a poison. This story shows that Robusta was always seen as a less fussy alternative to Arabica. It was always about growing more coffee with less effort so it could be cheaper. Today, Robusta is still misunderstood. Just the common name itself is an indication of that. We should call it by its scientific name, Canephora, since Robusta is just a variety, the same way Typica or Katura are varieties of Arabica. Many people don't realize it, but coffee is a fruit. Even 100% Arabica coffees aren't that sweet and interesting if the farmers haven't picked the cherries at the right time when they're ripe. Most Arabica in the supermarket is grown like that, and I hope I don't offend anybody by saying that they are not that tasty. Well, Robusta, or Canephora as we should actually say, has been treated like cheap Arabica for a century. So this is one of the main reasons that many people think it's so bad. But in the last couple of years, we've seen more people in specialty coffee actually trying to grow, process and roast Robusta in a way that brings out the best of it. So with all that out of the way, let's get back to the cupping. Hmm. As I said before, Robusta has almost double the amount of caffeine compared to Arabica coffee. 
And since it's evening here, I'm gonna spit out, otherwise I wouldn't have any sleep. This is actually very interesting. Robusta doesn't have much in terms of acidity, but when you up the dose, you increase the sweetness. So there's actually a lot of caramel, toffee, nuts. I would describe this as hazelnut. It has that kind of like slight bitterness at the end. I can see why some people would talk about burnt rubber, but it's very subtle here. It tastes just a little bit like that traditional coffee that you get in a bistro or inn, but in a lot more sophisticated way. So it doesn't have any of those negative attributes we normally associate with that kind of coffee. In my previous video about espresso beans, I talked a lot about the concentration and how it affects the flavor. I think with Robusta, with the attributes we have here, the almost total lack of acidity and the subdued sweetness. I think espresso is the perfect way to brew this coffee. Now let's try and pull a Robusta shot and see if we get some more interesting flavors by upping the dose significantly. Oh, that looks amazing. That's a lot of crema. I should say I pulled shots more impressive than this before, but those beans were probably also more freshly roasted. Still, it looks pretty good for a shot that's not really dialed in. Let's try and taste and see what we can find here. Wow. So much mouthfeel, but no acidity at all. A lot more sweetness. I feel like those flavors really come to their own right when they're amplified like this. The hazelnut is turned up a notch. It's more like a Nutella now. We have that chocolate nut combination. And then there's also some toffee. There's a hint of licorice as well. I really want to drink this, but I'm just gonna hate myself when I go to sleep if I do it. So this is something unique. I think more people should try. Like I've mentioned before, I'm not a huge fan of overwhelming acidity in espresso, so I can really appreciate this kind of completely different flavor profile. This is a Robusta from Northern Thailand. It's grown at a relatively high altitude, around 800 meters, and it's been honey processed, slow dried honey process. It's a little bit like a darker medium roast, which is quite common with Robustas. Since they have a low sugar content from nature's side, they need to be developed a bit more by the roaster in order to really bring out the best of them. So why should you care about Robusta? Well, I think if you really love coffee, then you also have to care about other species than just Arabica. In the future with climate change, there's a lot of talk about Arabica being endangered. Robusta can survive in a different climate. It's good to have some other species that will also work in the future. I think now that the specialty coffee community has started to put some more emphasis on this bean, we'll see some better processed, better grown and better roasted Robustas. And we are also starting to learn more about how to brew them. Like I mentioned, I think they should be dosed up quite significantly. So, so if you're used to brewing Arabica at 1 to 16, 1 to 17, you should probably brew Robusta at 1 to 12, 1 to 13 if you are making uh, Pua Ua or Aeropress. And like I just demonstrated here, a 100% Robusta shot is actually something that's really interesting to try because it's just so different and it's really tasty. I know there are actually a lot of people out there who aren't that crazy about acidity in the coffee. So I think if you're one of those persons, you should also have Robusta on your radar. This bean also has almost double the caffeine content compared to Arabica. So if that's something you care about in the early morning, well, I think there's also a case to be made for drinking some Robusta. I have a post on my blog where I go into a few more details about Robusta, so I'll put a link down in the description and you should definitely check that out as well. Have you tried Robusta? Do you want to try it? Let me know down in the comment section. If you like this video, then give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like this, then consider subscribing. And I'll see you in another video very soon.